The third step in um, the platform that I'm promoting is abroad in Nicaragua, and that's the biggest part that I'm extremely passionate about. My grandparents moved to Nicaragua when I was 12 years old, so I've been going there since um, I was 12. And I've made a lot of relationships, I've met a lot of people, and been able to change a lot of lives. Right now, World Missions Outreach is feeding 15,000 children a day at least one meal. And that's huge. I think that is a huge number, and it's absolutely amazing to be a part of an organization that is changing so many lives. These kids, they live on dirt floors, three-walled houses, have absolutely nothing. And if it wasn't for volunteers that go down there to help these children, they wouldn't be able to find meals. They wouldn't be able to survive. But the biggest thing while we're there is we want to break the cycle of poverty. And you can't do that without education. These people that are living in these circumstances, their government doesn't have the resources to provide that type of education and job opportunities. So we go down there and we provide an education, a free education. Um, we pay our teachers a uh, very good salary, so it provides employment for them, but it also gives the children opportunity to learn skills of the trade, woodwork, um, sewing, arts and crafts, anything that they can do to sell in a market or try to create some kind of income for their family. That is the easiest and most efficient way to end the cycle of poverty, is through education, and it's so, so important. One of the biggest things that we try to promote through Rural Missions Outreach is a child sponsorship program. And what I do personally is, whenever the first time I went to Nicaragua, I met a little girl named Jessica. And Jessica was six years old at the time, and absolutely adorable. She came up and gave me a hug, and I just fell in love with her. I went home with her, she invited me to her house, and she lived in a tin metal shack with basically just scrap mm. stuff they found out of a dump and uh, for a shelter. It was one room and there was two families living in it, and mm. they basically just had little hammocks of material they hung up and slept on, and that was their house. There was no running water, no electricity, they live on dirt floors, and just this little shack and it broke my heart and it changed my life just to see the type of circumstances that these people have and to know the freedom and the opportunity I have in America and to know how blessed I am and we take so much of this for granted that we don't even realize how half of our world lives in third world countries and in extreme poverty so for me, being able to just send $30 a month to change this little girl's life, to change this child's life was so, it, it just impacted me so much and it truly changed my life. It was eye opening and just an experience that I can never ever forget. Um, I now just send $30 and it provides uh, at least one meal a day for her. It provides an educational experience and opportunity and any clothes, shoes or medical attention she needs, it's there for her at any time, any point. And I know that by sitting my $30, I can make sure that she has those opportunities that I would want for any child in those circumstances. So for me, this is a big, a big organization that I'm very, very proud to be a part of and want to share with you guys so you know that no matter what you're going through in life, no matter what adversities or obstacles are facing you, you can overcome it. And there's people out there that are suffering and dealing with very, very hard hardships and they're able to overcome it. So no matter what, just get out in your community and volunteer and help others. It does make a difference no matter how big or how small, what level it's on. Making a difference and impacting lives is something that is just un undescribable. It's an amazing feeling and an amazing experience. Thank you, Amanda. So this uh, World Mission Outreach was started by your grandparents, correct? Yes, it was. Okay. So how did you become a part of your, your fellowship? Um, well, we have a local base here in uh, North Carolina, and we have a different setups and through churches all throughout the United States. Okay. So it's not something that you just have to be in North Carolina to be a part of. Okay. If you go to WMOC.org, then you can see the different churches that are listed on there that we're a part of, and you can get involved in your own community no matter where you are at in um, the nation, really. So it's something that's very easy. You just go to the different churches. You can volunteer your time, or you can volunteer. Your, um, your services by going abroad. You can donate clothes, food, money, anything, any, no matter how big or small, it definitely will be used and appreciated. Okay, so is Nicaragua the uh, only country that y'all have been to My, right now? Well, Nicaragua is our main focus. My grandparents have been everywhere from Haiti, Russia, Cuba, 
uh, Guatemala, most Central America countries they've been to. So um, Nicaragua is where they found, fell in love with the people, and it just kind of worked out where they found kind of a, a facility where they could open a school, an orphanage, and a health clinic. And they just absolutely knew that was where they were, their calling was and they, where they wanted to be at. That's good. That's good. That's a, that's a very, very touching story. Um, it's uh, Jessica that you were yes. talking about. I know, I hung on that. <laughs> that, that was so tragic, really. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, how long ago was that? I met her when I was 12, um, and she was 6. Mm -hmm. So I kind of got to go back ever since and just see the improvements and how my donation of $30 a month <clears throat> impacted and has changed your life. Now, their family has running water, they have electricity to run a refrigerator, a small fridge, and they have a cement floored house, and they have four walls. It's still very small, but for um, the standards of Nicaragua living, they are very well off. Now, was that just, her, I mean, has the community down there, her sort of community changed for the better like that as well? Because of World Missions Outreach, our whole um, kilometer, uh, the 19th through the 17th kilometer, we've been able to put electricity in and running water in for those people. So it's really impacted their lives and not just individuals, but the whole community. So this platform on is uh, Miss Mecklenburg, right? Yes. Uh, you say it's a children's network? Um, the Miss America National Platform is Children's Miracle Network. My platform is making a difference around the corner and around the world. So I like to implement those and use them both together. But this is Amanda Sowards, and thank you for your time. Nicely done. Okay, and then... I like how you wrapped it up. I want to go. This one. Yeah. Don't know how it is you looked at me